I guess Johnson isn't having any luck uh, getting your emergency generator started. No. I'll go out and give him a hand. You think you'd be able to get it going? Oh, sure. Then we'll uh, throw some kind of a dinner together. <laughs> Does this uh, station get many unexpected guests? No, we get our quota. But we uh, can't necessarily make them comfortable. But we uh, keep them warm. Oh, believe me, we're grateful. That uh, helicopter wouldn't be too awfully comfortable around now. <laughs> I'll keep you uh, under watch, Doctor. See you later. Okay, thank you. You don't blame me for the storm, do you? No. I don't blame anybody except myself. You know, when you told me that you were going to be taking Alan Quartermain's place, my internal smoke alarm system should have gone off with a loud beep. Seems that everything you touch somehow turns into a disaster. You didn't always feel that way. Well, I'm talking about the way I feel now. Range for us to spend the night together, you know. I don't understand why you're so nervous. I mean, we do have two chaperones. I'm not nervous. Well, maybe the word is irrational. I mean, you're acting like I'm responsible for an act of God. Believe me, I'm not confused about the identities. Well, then let's not blame each other. I I'm sure they'll have the generator working by morning, and you can reassure Leslie by radio, and, well, with any luck, we'll be able to fly out of here as soon as it's daylight. Yeah, they're working on the generator right now. Well, then fine. You'll be able to communicate with your wife, which will be a novel experience. And in the meantime, you and I have each other, and it's an adventure, Rick. I don't understand why you can't just relax and enjoy it. Well, I really didn't need another adventure in my life. Leslie's probably worried sick, and she's got a whole house full of guests to take care of. Oh, I am sure Leslie has managed it. I mean, she's... she's so capable. I really cannot think of any emergency that Leslie couldn't muddle through somehow. Suppose we just forget the subject of Leslie before I forget I'm supposed to be a gentleman, all right? You know something? I liked you much better before you started pretending you were a gentleman. Why don't you think about going back to your old self again? Monica, you know, uh, some of us profit from our past mistakes. We change. You ought to try it. Well, you have always prided yourself on honesty. Would you answer a question for me now, honestly? What's the question? The two of us being together, doesn't that bring back memories to you, too? Honestly. Look, uh, this conversation is getting us nowhere. I think I'll step outside and see if I can't get my hand with that generator. It's not exactly gourmet cooking, but it's the best I could do under the circumstances. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Monica. Aren't you going to eat? Oh, well, I'll get something later. Um, would you mind if I sat and chatted with you while you had your dinner? If that's your pleasure. Looks like we're going to end up spending the whole night right here. doesn't seem to be anything better to do. So we might as well just sit back and relax and enjoy it. Thanks. We ought to start getting out to that helicopter. Oh? Well, how's the pilot? Well, he's okay. He's gonna go with us just in case we have any trouble with takeoff. Well, why trouble? I mean, it's gonna be a lot easier going up than it was being forced down the way we were. Well, there's more than another foot of ice and snow. Well, it's been built up since we've been here. Mm-hmm. Worried? No. Just anxious to get moving. Okay. You don't have to hint anymore. Oh. I'm gonna miss this place. To each his own. All the memories. Monica, let's go. Well, wait a minute. It's cold out there. 
You want me to button up, don't you? Mm-hmm. Faster and with less chatter. You know, I always thought you were such a romantic. I mean, do you have any idea how long it's been since we spent a night together? Actually, I think they should put a plaque right up there to commemorate the event. Monica. I'm ready. Isn't there anything in life that you take seriously? Yes, medicine. You know, we're forced down. We risk our necks getting here. We spend an uncomfortable night worrying. We don't even know if we're going to be able to lift out. Wouldn't it have been funny if they had to send a rescue team? And to you, it's all one big joke. Well, listen to you. I mean, listen to this man. First you lose your sense of adventure, then you lose your sense of humor. I really think you're in bad shape. I see no occasion for humor. You know what I really think is happening? Really? I think Leslie is turning... turning a man that was exciting, and young, and a hero type, into an old, married type. It's a pity. Stop, will you give me a break? This is the man that did it all. He supplied the know-how. I merely supplied the manpower. Hey, look, modesty is fine, but don't push it too far. Would anybody be interested in knowing that I was really scared? Well, that's terrific. It adds to the drama. Hey, I was scared, too, for a while. At takeoff. <laughs> I wasn't sure what would you do. Well, who was, man? I certainly wasn't sure, I'll oh, tell you. You could have pulled it off without me. <laughs> After a few minutes, I just leaned back and relaxed. <laughs> You know, now I know the kind of cool a guy like you needs when he walks into an operating room. <laughs> oh, but that pertinent. I mean, that is a pertinent observation. Monica, will you please stop? I mean, while we're trying to decide who was a hero and who was scared, this man is sitting here and he needs help. What do you think, Doc? Is it bad? Well, I don't think anything is broken. But I'd really like to see some x-rays before I say for sure. Well, Rick, if you want to go on home, I can take over and I can call the ambulance. No, I had your car driven around front. Ah, oh, good. Well, I'm sure Leslie's going to want to hear from you. I'm sure your wife got the word by now, Doctor. Okay, I'd like to get started. I, um, I want to stop off at the hospital first. How are you holding up? Couldn't be better. Yes. Oh, oh well, you, you go along. I'll be there in, uh, just a minute, okay? Excuse me, uh, do you have a telephone directory? Sure, bottom door of the desk. Terrific, thank you. Charles Daly Harold, sir. Just one more, Doctor. Knock it off. This isn't a news story. You've got to be kidding. How did you feel when you took off in the helicopter, Doctor? Excuse me. Is that the wife? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I didn't realize you were so scared. I mean, all night in that ranger station, I just kept thinking of you having to cope with a house full of guests. And all I could think of, why would he do something like that? This whole thing could have been avoided. It was a storm, honey, remember? Oh, I just mean that you needn't have gone out at all as long as Dr. Quartermain wasn't able to go with you. Monica is Alan Quartermain's assistant on this whole project. She's been on most of these other runs with him. And the weather reports all day long. They have been predicting a storm. And you knew that. You must have known that. Everybody knew, knew that. And you certainly know about Monica. I mean, we all know that uh, she's always up to some little trick or other. I agreed to go on this run. We were two professionals doing a job. Neither the flight or the accident had anything to do with Monica or her tricks. Mm -hmm. The whole incident was totally unpredictable. Mm -hmm. And at this late date, also inconsequential. Inconsequential? Mm -hmm. You spent a night in a lonely mountain cabin with that woman, and you call it inconsequential? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but you realize that we do not see eye to eye on that. Number one, it wasn't uh, a lonely mountain cabin. There was a ranger and a pilot there with us. Second, it wasn't a romantic mountain cabin setting. It was a one-room shack, and we were all terribly uncomfortable last night. Well, you can't blame me for imagining all sorts of things, particularly as I know her so very well. Well, you could have concentrated on other things, you sweet nut, like how much I love you. Not thinking of me looking for outside thrills and kicks, especially with Monica. Well, what, would you, what would you have done if the situation had been reversed? And you'd have to spend the whole night worrying and wondering 
and playing host to all of those people. To begin with, I would have trusted you. And I'm not being sanctimonious, Leslie. Honey, I realize that you got your hands full with Laura and it's got you uptight, but it's not fair to take it out on me. Laura doesn't have anything to do with it. Well, something's got you spooked, otherwise you wouldn't be thinking the way you are. Monica? I mean, instead of worrying about me being hurt or dead or alive, you're worrying about me being with Monica. That's not true. I was worried sick about it. I don't doubt that you were worried sick. But about what? All the wrong things. Yeah. I mean, uh, forgive the intrusion. I hope I'm not interrupting your family quarrel. You both talk so tense. Get on with it, Monica. What is it? Uh, it's about the reporter. He seems to be a rather persistent sort. He insists on getting an interview from you. Uh, he won't leave otherwise. Want to bet? Oh, boy. Immovable object, irresistible force. Uh, well, no matter what, I think I covered the matter fairly thoroughly. You covered what? Well, I told him uh, all I remembered about our little adventure. <laughs> Did I say something I should? Baby, that's your greatest talent. Hi. Where, where's Rick? The hospital. Oh. Have you seen the paper? How about that, huh? I told you to come out of this a hero. And look at that expression on Monica Weber's face. I've seen that look of adulation for Rick many times. Leslie, are you all right? I'm fine, David. Thank you. Excuse me. interrupt your paperwork there? I'd like to know how you're feeling after a mission of mercy. I'm off it, Jeff. Hey, I'm sorry, Rick. I didn't mean to make light of it. No, hey, that's all right. I know. I'm probably... It's pretty hairy, huh? Yeah. Right when I learned about it, I went over to Leslie's as soon as I could. It's pretty tough on her, too, you know. I know, and as it turns out, I compounded her problems, too. How so? Well, I was somewhat exhausted. You know, totally drained from the whole thing. And instead of understanding what she had been going through, I, I flew off the handle. It's just that she, she kept bringing up the fact that I was up there with Monica. Well, I can see your point. So can I, logically. From the emotional standpoint, she has no reason to be insecure about me, especially where Monica is concerned. I mean, I haven't given her any cause. Does she really think I'm going to be unfaithful after being married just a couple of months? No, I think you should try explaining that to Leslie, calmly. And you try bringing some flowers to her, you know? That kind of serves as a pretty good uh, peacemaker. You know, for a baby brother, you make some pretty good sense. Oh, shucks. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do it right after work. So, Rick, uh, how long is David gonna stay with you? I mean, now that the holidays are over? Good question. I've been thinking about asking him that myself. His being there doesn't help my marriage any. David Hamilton wanted you to know he's in hydrotherapy. He's looking for a ride home. Good. I'll drop in on my way out. All right. And you have a good rest. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Hey, Rick. How, how you feeling? I'll tell you something. If man was meant to fly, God would have given him wings. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you must have got my note, huh? Yeah, I was almost ready to ignore it, though. I'm in kind of a hurry to get home and see Leslie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, look, if you guys want a little time to be alone, I can uh, go to a movie or something. No, that's not necessary. The house is plenty big enough so all of us can have enough privacy. Okay, I'll let you give me a ride home, and then uh, you can tell me all about your adventure. I'll sneak into my room and leave you alone for a while. Frankly, uh, I don't even want to discuss it. They made it seem to be more important than it, uh, it really was. Rick, my friend, modesty has always been your biggest fault. <laughs>